mm. for half a year. Mm. <laughs> and we just covered it. I didn't understand the goal of the company. We watched it at the end of the day. But we also watched it and it was not super excited. That's so cool that the new room got. You guys have a fandom. <laughs> a fandom? Yes! Okay! <laughs> Is this paper? No. What is this? It's a box. Oh, I thought it was like too light to be vapor. <laughs> Whoa, is that the white one? Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel and we're super excited to bring you a new video specifically for you, IB students or people who are interested in IB. Today we have something special because as DB2 students we want to share everything we know about the IB Diploma Program. So if you're curious what it's like to be an IB student or you're already in the program looking for some tips and insights, you're in the right place. Uh, so Matas, can you tell me what those letters IBDP stands for? Well, of, yes, of course I can. I stands for international, B stands for baccalaureate, D stands for diploma, P stands for program. But does that mean that these studies are like university baccalaureate studies? Uh, sort of, yes and no. The IB program tries to imitate, imitate such university studies and apply it to high schoolers. So it's a great way for your upcoming university years if you're ever trying to uh, uh, to find more of like a more difficult, challenging workload and so on. Goda, um, and I was wondering, how long will it take to complete the program? So usually it takes up to two years, but of, of course it is less than 18 years, uh, eight, not years, months. Um, and I guess you, you don't have to worry about that because really the time just flies when you're in the program. And some of our teachers likes to call the IB program as a marathon uh, because of the workload and the academic intensity and I would say I couldn't agree more with that. And the real question is, is when and how can you really enroll? Well in this program you can enroll during 10th grade or after you finish it and in this program you will start in the specifically in the 11th grade and to get accepted you will need to take a admission test which will include such parts as English, mathematics, biology, psych, physics, chemistry, critical thinking, and so on. Afterwards, with that, you'll have to have a meeting with your IB coordinator to discuss extra, certain extracurricular activities, possible plans for the future, academic pursuits, and hobbies. And during that meeting, you have to make sure you ask any questions about the program and clear out any doubts that you have. So, and now the real question is, uh, which personality traits you will improve in this uh, program and what kind of benefits the program can offer you. So basically the program itself seeks to develop um, inquirers, knowledgeable thinkers, uh, communicators, principled, open-minded, caring and risk-taker students as well balanced and reflective. So during this two years um, this program can offer you a lot of great opportunities as well a lot of opportunities uh, during your university years and as well you will become more disciplined because you really need to plan your time if you do want to um, finish this program successfully and Matas maybe you can share what kind of improvements do you believe this program can offer you and as well maybe you already have seen some kind of a change in your personality or academic performance. Well first of all I think uh, one of the improvements that I believe this program can offer is obviously well as mentioned discipline I think it's incredibly important maybe not that at the beginning of the year but as you sort of slowly start progressively getting more intense sort of have to uh, strictly manage your time, sort of find other times for hobbies, maybe sometimes even you have to stop doing certain things. The main, I think, best skills that I think that I have at least started taking is like, more, like taking initiative. I think that's a very important part of, of the ABDB program. If you want to get something done, you always have to take initiative. And because usually without taking that, you will be left stranded, um, teachers will not help you and so on. So you have to take the initiative to always ask, to always inquire, to always do something if you want to sort of achieve something. I think it's, it's most important just to sort of understand and manage and survive under like extreme conditions because sometimes it really is a struggle, sometimes things are unclear, sometimes there's a lot of work and you don't find and manage time and I think that's an incredibly I think having that experience in general makes you more careful and makes you plan a little bit ahead of time. I would also like to ask God though, what kind of benefits do you believe the uh, you will gain from this course? Well, I actually just really agree with you. 
So basically, you will become disciplined if you do the work and plan your time. Uh, like Matos mentioned, that it is really important for the future. You learn how to be academically honest, because uh, quoting and citing and referencing in the IB program is really, really important, especially when you have to write your EE, which is extended essay. Um, then as well, your uh, researching um, skills as well. It is really sometimes difficult to find um, valid and uh, as well credible sources to use in your um, internal assessment or other stuff. It really helps you to gain the, uh, gain the skills to plan your time as well to plan, plan your time effectively um, and as well basically yeah helps you in university. Let's move on to the sub subject choices because it is really an important aspect of the IB program. So Matas, can you explain to me a little bit um, how do you choose the IB subjects? Well, of course. Well, to put it simply, there are six groups overall. So languages and literature, language acquisition, individuals and society, sciences, mathematics and arts. And students have to choose one subject from each group, but because we're an erudito, uh, we do not have a sixth group, which is arts, and we can choose this second subject from any group. Uh, Godla, can you briefly describe every single group? Uh, yes, of course. So language and literature, it usually is uh, English A or just language A in general. So you focus mostly on reading literature pieces as well analyzing them. So uh, you as well improve on, on your writing skills, uh, but in language and acquisition. So it usually uh, comes with the German B or as an English B. So you learn how to use the language to communicate effectively as well um, as well basically about different text types. Mathematic group contains different approaches to math, so there's one um, which is, uh, wait, up. it is AA, which is uh, analysis. Analysis and applications, I think something like Yeah, that. and then as well math AI, which is analysis and interpretation, I think so. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, they're quite similar, but I would say the AA is, I, I guess, a little bit more complex, and the IA involves more of analyzing the data and as well individuals and societies are mostly just social science, sciences in general so like an economics, psychology, business management then uh, I think the fourth group is the science group so it contains physics, chemistry, computer science and biology and the last group is art and it is basically music theory, graphic design but as Matt has already mentioned we do not have this group yet uh, implemented into our school. How do we distinguish between SLHL? What does it mean? What is the importance? And I'll gladly explain. So remember in the IB enrollment process I would always hear SL and HL when discussing subject choices and I would be completely confused because I don't know what they would ever even mean. Well, what does it mean to pick an SL subject? How, what does it mean to pick an HL subject? I don't know what's the difference and you know how do I make sure I take the ones that are right for me? So I believe there might be other students who wonder what that also means as well. So SL practically stands for standard level and HL for higher level. And when you decide you're on your subjects, you have to pick the specific level. So what typically most IB students do is pick three standard level subjects and three higher level subjects. But some students who are uh, who like a challenge, who like to possibly put a little bit more uh, food on their plate, usually take um, at least four HL subjects and obviously that is going to mean you're going to have more lessons, you're going to have additional content and one more extra exam. So obviously if you are considering taking the more challenging option, you should really think about these choices and pick wisely because you're going to have a way bigger workload. Remember a lot of IB students already struggle with three HL subjects and three standard level subjects. You should always take into account what it means to take another fourth one which is obviously going to eat up even more of your time. Yeah, and I think even our school does not allow you to take the fourth HL subject. Yeah. Because it is, like Matt said, it is really intense and challenging. So, so I guess it as well depends on the school whether they allow you to take the fourth HL subject. And if they do allow you, it is not as well certain if they will allow you to uh, pass the fourth HL exam. Now we're going to move on to the internal assessment. So, or the IA as the IB students call it. So basically, like I said, it is an internal assessment. So it usually involves some kind of a research or work uh, from all of your chosen subjects. So in languages, it's usually a speech. 
English. So you do have to prepare in language A, you have to prepare a speech, choose uh, usually two extracts and just talk about the global problem. And with English B, you, you get, I think as well, two extracts from the books you read in the class and you have to um, basically talk about it and as well analyze them. Uh, in sciences, you have to do a research and then write like about two thousand uh, words uh, essay, kind of like a yeah, like like an essay. And as well in math, yeah, like a science as well, you have to do some kind of a research. So now uh, it is important to uh, talk about the exams. I believe this is quite honestly the most fun part of IB. Definitely. Yeah, so this will be probably the most intense and difficult part of the of the program because you will have around 12 to 15 exams to write and in every chosen subject you will have at least two or three exams and we call them papers. They address different content and they vary especially in difficulty. Uh, yeah, so they as well hold different weight um, regarding your the overall uh, score you're gonna get in the diploma so usually um, the IAs count if you're in SL they count for 30% of your grade the final grade and 70% um, goes for exam and if you are taking an HL subject the IA usually takes around uh, or holds 20% and then the exams 80% they usually start at the end of April and the beginning of May and the exam session lasts for around two weeks you don't have le any lessons during that time and sometimes school gives a few weeks off before the exam session starts for some self-study so I'll take that into account yeah and in general it sounds like it is a lot uh, but if you start preparing earlier and in advance and use effective studying techniques you will undoubtedly pass them and yeah I guess we can just quickly go over what kind of um, experience we we had over right now in the IB program so even though it is a really challenging program I have been kind of enjoying it I really like that you have to understand the presented co content and not just observe the information and if you're learning for some kind of a test you can just memorize all the content and hope that you will get a good, good grade you actually have to um, understand the con content um, the teams in general are quite complex, but they are really interesting. And if you do ch choose the subjects you really like, I, I really hope it's going to be interesting for you because it has been really interesting for me. And I as well noticed that uh, my writing skills really improved as well as critical thinking ability. Um, I am quite tired by this moment, I'm not gonna lie, but... I believe this program has been really beneficial for me and I can only advise uh, that you should always remind yourself why you're taking this program um, to not lose the motivation along the way and uh, and to take out probably everything that IB offers you. My experience of the program has been overall nice but I also feel like obviously I've experienced road bumps and I feel like it's also important to address them. I think the first year was probably the best year for IB. It's the beginning year where you get to do practically the beginning, the learning part, so it is quite easy. You're learning material, you're being introduced to new things, and it's quite interesting, especially if the subjects you've chosen are the ones you like. So for example, I chose history, economics, and learning about that was quite interesting. I mean, even computer science was really fun. Um, I've never thought I would be able to code anything in Python, but I managed to do it. And it was quite interesting, but then at the end, you start getting overworked, and you start work starts piling up, then you need to prioritize, you know, internal assessments, extended essay, and so on. And sometimes planning those dates gets really mixed up. Teachers don't always have the time to sort of help you and assist you and to point you in the right direction all the time. So you're consistently guided to go one, one way or the other and then you get mixed up. There's something that I've noticed specifically in IB is that there's this period of high intensity, hap like learning where you're kind of enthusiastic and you kind of get interested. But then at the end, you sort of get, the closer you near the end, the more you start feeling this sort of slump feeling that essentially kind of is like a, is like a tiredness that you don't really want to work anymore, that you're kind of being already annoyed by the same, by the same work, you know, you want to, you want to sort of prioritize learning more than you want to just like put everything on the paper and it gets annoying, it, it's, it's a lot of work and I feel like I've noticed that a lot. So the best way to avoid that is obviously to do everything as early as possible and you know um, 
maybe that is just me maybe it's my time scheduling but really it is something to remind yourself that even if you feel great in the first year be wary that the second year might just take a huge turn I think it's very important to talk about the tips to survive AB. Do you want to yeah. keep naming one each and then commenting on one of them? Yeah, for sure. So the first one, I think this is a really crucial one. So it is to take notes during the lessons. So you can use a lot of different programs for uh, for taking notes in the class. I really love the Notion program. Uh, I think you as well use it. Yeah, I use it consistently. Yeah, there's Evernote, but I like the Notion more because it's really, you can as well upload the pictures there as well, files, and to have it like really nicely um, written down so yeah i do believe it's really important because after right after the lesson you can actually um as well try to memorize and go over again the 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 content you were presented in the lesson because it helps you to kind of understand it more and not forget it just immediately and the second is obviously to be focused and in, in the lessons and try to be as an active of a participant and if there's anything that's not clear Go ask your teachers. It's very crucial that you start getting as much you use your teachers to the fullest extent, considering that self-study may be great, but there's a certain limitation to it. And if you keep depending on it, you might as well just, you know, not make as much progress as you need. Be sure to ask teachers for help. Having notes, being focused in class consistently will save you a lot of time and will let you work quickly. So our third tip for you guys is to create or form a study group with friends because uh, I believe it's sometimes uh, it can be way easier to actually study because maybe your friends or your classmates do understand some con concepts that you don't and basically you can help each other as well share um, some kind of notes and as well do some kind of test to basically help you prepare for the test or you can as well uh, help each other to do the internal assessment. Um, organize your work and divide the tasks into smaller parts. Uh, you don't want to leave everything last minute because trust me, while for example if you do computer science you don't want to be leaving your IA for the very last minute, you want to be doing very simple functions from the very beginning, you want to be slowly building it because remember you're making a program, you're not writing a paper. Um, even so, even if you're writing a paper you should focus on, you know, writing little by little and always revising it. Just don't write everything last minute. It's incredibly important you assure quality over quantity. Have a phys be physically active, eat healthy, and get enough sleep. Try to sleep till eight to nine hours, even if it sometimes is impossible. Try to aim for that amount, and obviously stay stay active, eat healthy. That's important. If you are active, obviously you won't feel as great. You're probably not going to want to be want to focus or study. If you don't eat healthy, you're probably not going to also be in the mood to study. So definitely make give yourself the best environment to do all this work because it is going to get tedious and you best do it in the good conditions and poor conditions. We as well advise you to use online IB, IB sources because there are so much IB sources online. As well you can find past papers and basically practicing with past papers it's really crucial is especially when you're preparing for exams or in general you do want to understand how the mark schemes work how the how you should answer the question so you you get all the points so and not just past papers past papers there's as well a, a lot of videos online and basically summaries of the of the contents and as well the themes in your um, subjects uh, and yeah as well to effectively learn and not just to reread your textbook which is not gonna help you to really understand um, understand the themes is basically to use uh, different uh, learning techniques and to kind of try them out so it can be like space practice as well the uh, Leitner system the flashcards as well the Feynman uh, techniques so you can just try them all and just see which one uh, works best for you and the last tip which is very important is to start preparing for exams early even if you're in your first year of IB, revising content is incredibly important. Whether it's, you know, economic concepts, whether, you know, it's like historical events or anything, maybe like computer science programming, try doing those little things in your free time, just bit by bit, so at least you don't completely forget what you're learning. And, and in general, that will help you prep for your exams. It will make learning and retaining material on the very last days way easier. You're gonna feel more confident and definitely don't see, don't leave everything for last minute so you would cram everything and completely jumble your brain and, and overload it. 
that's enough for our video, right? We have yes. given our tips. We've explained some IB stuff. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed it very much. If there are any questions, if there are any suggestions you can provide us, maybe you have some of your own experiences, definitely share them with us. But uh, for now, I think that's enough for our video. And uh, we thank you for watching. Yeah, and we'll see you next time, probably. Woo! Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> this is our fight club. No, this is the fight club. That's good. Hey, you too. We have to go and film the film. Yeah. <laughs>